what would make you want not to destroy something would be your sense, your appreciation of its beauty. If we start with the world as a beautiful, as something beautiful, we would want, what do you do with anything beautiful? You fall in love with it. And by falling in love with the world, you want to keep it around. And that's the simplest answer to the problem of what, of the world. It's a, the Greeks thought that the word cosmos, meaning the whole thing, the whole bag, really was a, an aesthetic term. It meant orderly, beautifully, uh, carefully, um, considerately, it, 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 and it was closer to the word for, for cosmetics than it is to the word cosmonaut. In the Greek world, it meant an adornment. So the world, the cosmos, was an adornment, something extraordinarily beautiful that you could see in the night sky, you could see in, in a forest, you could see in a, anywhere, in a person, in the way the hair falls on a woman, the way a, a man moves his hands when he's working, what, whatever. It could be anywhere at all. And that was the cosmos showing itself. It displays. Now, once we reawaken our aesthetic sense and are not anesthetized as we are by all the distractions. If we were not anesthetized, we would be able to see and appreciate the beauty in the world. Now, the moment there's beauty, you fall in love with beauty. That's, that's Plato, but it's also our own experiences. You see a beautiful man or a beautiful woman and you fall in love with them. That's the first bit of attraction. And if you fall in love with something, love the world, not through Christian moralism about you must love the world, or an economic one, it's sustainability for our own benefit, therefore we'll live longer. That is not it. It's got to be something much more profound that touches the heart. And it touches the heart if you, if you realize that our job on the earth is to love it, to fall in love with it. Not just to love it, you must love the world, but to fall in love with it. And you only fall in love with it if you're aesthetically alive to it. Well, we're, you know, we're not in love with the world now because we're anesthetized. Uh, Robert J. Lifton has a great thing about psychic numbing. We're psychically numbed. I mean, we, we numb our senses from morning till night, whether it's with noise or loud music or light at night. Uh, so that you never see the night sky, or whether it's with a glass of ice water before you eat. You've numbed your mouth. You, you, we don't smell, we don't, we don't, we're anesthetized. Uh, I'm leaving out the pharmaceutical industry, but that's all a business of anesthetization or changing the, our sensation stuff. So everything is to keep the senses stopped, shut down. So. Nobody sees the beauty. We're not any longer appreciators. Our definition of the human being now has become uh, homo sapiens, we know, or homo, God knows, all kinds of things, you know, homo faber, we make things. I think our point is homo aestheticus. I think the human being is on the planet in order to appreciate it. That's all. You don't have to do anything with it. You have to appreciate it. And what you do with it should add to its beauty. You know, the loss of uh, the loss that I was talking about there, the loss of beauty, the loss of appreciation, or the uh, what we do have left, though, is a feeling of loss. Something's missing. Something's missing in our lives. And there's some statistic done by some marvelous statistician, sociologist, anthropologist, that we are only at rank 27 in the category of societies that's happy. Yet we have sub-zero fridges and Viking ranges and hybrid cars and all the rest, but we're not happy. And our job, you know, in America is the pursuit of happiness. It doesn't mean chasing after happiness, by the way. I think it means that is our pursuit. The pursuit, that, that is our task, is the work of happiness. Well, there's no happiness without the sense of beauty and without somehow or another being in love with life. <laughs> that is a great